Um, the project was first applied for in 2015 as part of the then new uh, v Volkswagen funding program Originalitätsverdacht, what is not so easy to translate into English, we could say suspected originality or something like this. Initially, it was granted for two years. The Volkswagen program expressly, expressly encouraged and still encourages the submission of projects that contradict, quote, established expertise and generally accepted intuitions, end of quote. And so we decided to submit an application entitled Society After Money, because we thought this contradicts generally accepted intuitions. Why can ah, sorry. Um, okay, I'm sorry. We were for the first application and still are with one exception. I come to this in a minute, Hanno Pahl, then at the uh, LMU in Munich, now at the University of Bonn, Stefan Meretz, Commons Institute Bonn, and now also University of Bonn, Manuel Scholz-Weckerde from the University of Economics in Vienna, and me, University of Bonn Media Studies. The first sentences of our then proposal were, I just read it, but I promise it's the only long quote <laughs> in the presentation, everything is centered on money. It seems that without money, no kind of individual or collective practice, no technological or scientific development is conceivable. For a long time, money has been criticized. But the idea of a society after money triggers resistance and astonishment. It contradicts commonly accepted intuitions, as was proposed by the Volkswagen Foundation. But historical studies, see for example, Jacques Legoff, Money in the Middle Ages, show that money did not always have the role it assumes nowadays. In the project, firstly, heterogeneous domains of knowledge entered into a dialogue with one another in order to look at their specific theories and critics of money in a reciprocal way. The project is conceived as the beginning of a necessary interdisciplinary dialogue. Secondly, in doing so, the possibility of post-monetary forms of organization and production has been taken into account, have been taken into account, and been examined with an open outcome. So that was basically our uh, first proposal. So we had some meetings at uh, Vienna, for example, and in Bonn, and discussed uh, controversially, I have to say, but this was big fun, um, our different propositions. The first project phase ran from 2016 to 2018 and was mainly devoted to theoretical work. We organized several internal workshops with colleagues and invited guests from the fields of commons and media theory, Marxist economics and sociology, critique of value and philosophy, literary studies and heterodox economics. We discussed whether an economy without money is conceivable. It was one of the very seldom opportunities of a really interdisciplinary dialogue and discussion. This alone was one of the good, as for me, as to say, characteristics of the project, because such interdisciplinary work is really needed and unfortunately seldomly possible. It opened up new horizons and one could leave his or her own petrified ways of thinking behind. New questions could emerge. Well, I learned a lot, at least. And so to get you a um, glimpse at our results, we had made two books at the end of the first phase. It, in German, it was Postmonetär Denken, Thinking Postmonetary. And the English version we did with Bloomsbury was called Society After Money. And it's basically the same book as the German, but in English, of course. But with the one exception, we have a very interesting afterword by Anitra Nelson reflecting on the content of the book. And so this is one of the reasons why I'm very happy that Anitra is with us today. She wrote a perfectly beautiful and concise afterword in that book. And I can't walk you through you through the content of the book. Of course, it's far too small, I guess, to, for you to read right now. I just want to tell you we have, for example, a very long first chapter by Lars Heitmann, which he gives a very, very rich overview over several theories 
but also practical initiatives of post-monetary organization and coordination. So if you are generally interested in that question, give it a look. Then there are texts on the theory of money, controversial positions on the theory of money. There's a text, very beautiful text by Annette, who is also here today, Annette Schlem, on uh, post-monetary elements in utopian fiction. Texts on commons theory and post-monetary society. And finally, a, te a text on um, uh, queer feminist theory by Friederike Habermann, which enriches our positions in the book. And finally, some texts on the mediality of money and its change to in post-monetary economics and so on. So perhaps uh, you might give it a look, you find some snippets of it uh, also online. I can post later on um, some links that might be helpful for you. Okay, that was basically the first phase and our results of the first phase. And then somewhat surprisingly, the opportunity arose to apply for a second phase. And that's exactly what we did. And the second phase was is called Society After Money, a simulation. And it's also funded, of course, by the Volkswagen Foundation from 2019 to basically 2023. And this second phase, firstly, has another PI, an additional PI, and this is Professor Dr. Gabriele Grammelsberger from the RWTH Aachen, the Technical University in Aachen, and she's an expert in the theory and history of science and technology, especially of computer simulation. And this is, of course, why she is an important part of the project. The rest of the lineup you know already. I don't have to repeat that right now. Um, the basic idea of the second phase is the basic idea of the second phase is while the first phase was more theoretically oriented, the second phase now tries to simulate a certain type of presumed post-monetary economy. So the basic question is, are post and non-monetary economics not just theoretically conceivable, but also possible to simulate? We decided after the first phase, I don't want to go into the theoretical details right now. We have a lot of interesting papers on that today, and you can also read part of it in our books and in journal articles. We focus very much on commons theory and the uh, idea of commoning. And it, just to mention that there is the Nobel Prize 2009 in uh, economics for Elena Ostrom's work on commons theory and the history of common economies, which was a very important part of our theoretical makeup. And we're working, you will hear about in more detail later on this, with uh, procedures of agent-based simulation. Agent-based simulation is a widespread tool of economic research, um, but these simulations usually always and without questioning assume monetary and market economies, which is not very surprising after all, but this is the innovative idea of our project just to do it without markets and money and to try to simulate completely different economic structures. And that's the goal, which um, shall first shall be the first. So that's our idea to develop a simulation model of non-monetary non-market economy, a document and reflect on this construction process. The idea is not so much to have at the end a kind of blueprint for a new society, but observing the way where 